feed kids on a carnivore diet? How can you manage a carnivore diet for a whole family? How can you afford it when multiple people in the house are carnivore? If you have questions like these, you are in for a serious treat today. Hi, I'm Jen. If you're new here, I am delighted to meet you. I've experienced radical healing on a carnivore diet and I'd love nothing more than to help you achieve abundant health through diet too. I get a lot of questions about the ins and outs of doing carnivore as a family, especially when kids are involved. Now I'm single with the exception of my carnivore dog. So my experience isn't super helpful when it comes to these questions. But Rebecca, my guest today, is a mother of eight, and she and her husband transitioned their entire family to a carnivore diet about a year ago. She is truly a wealth of information on all things carnivore, including the initial transition, meal choice, planning, budgeting, and just about every other carnivore topic that you can think of. I'd be honored for you to join in on this interview. Now trust me, you'll be glad you did. Like I said, Rebecca is a wife and a homeschool mom to eight kids, and these kids range in age from two to 15. She and her husband made the switch to carnivore about a year ago and transitioned to their entire family over. Today, she's here to tell us all about it. So welcome, Rebecca, and thank you so much for coming on my channel. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So let's just dive right in. What did your diet look like before carnivore, and what made you guys make the transition? Sure. Uh, before we had basically two versions of our diet, which was the, I'm trying really hard to be healthy and incorporate lots of fr fruits and vegetables and whole grains and minimal sugar. And the other half was we're desperately busy and we're eating Kraft macaroni and cheese and grabbing stuff at the store, whatever's fast, whatever's easy, whatever's cheap, because we're really busy. And we would kind of fluctuate back and forth between trying really hard to do what we thought was the right thing and just never really being able to stick with anything for very long because <laughs> because we like snacks we like sweets and we were big and busy we like pizza you know but that was that was basically us which is just I think a pretty pretty standard for the average family you, you want to do well but kind of don't know really what to do <laughs> Sure. And with so many mouths to feed, it's kind of like you got to choose what's easy too. Yes. Oh, big time. Having to prepare and think through and meal plan three meals a day was just daunting. I used to say like, I'm, I'm pretty smart person and I don't know why I cannot meal plan for a whole week. Like I should be able to just make a list and go to the grocery store. And then I reach like day three and we would be out of half the things that were for the ingredients for this meal or that meal. And then you didn't thaw something and then there's not time. And forgot about a softball game. And I was just like, we will just get pizza. That's like, we'll just get pizza. We'll make tacos. We'll do that's That's like our two go-to things, pizza and tacos. <laughs> oh yeah. I know everyone watching this can relate to that. So then what happened that made you guys even start thinking about carnivore? Uh, the, the main push for it was my husband's health. He got really, really sick. He had been kind of progressively getting worse over the past four or five years. Not just generally not feeling well, his energy was low, his, he's struggled with anxiety disorder for a long time, and that was getting worse. And it finally kind of reached a tipping point a year ago. Uh, it was like Father's Day a year ago, he thought he was having a heart attack, and we took him to the ER, and his blood pressure was like 230 over 150, which is terrifyingly high. It's, it's really amazing that he didn't have a stroke. And and that was a big wake up call. And that's when he realized how sick he felt and how bad he felt. I mean, he knew he felt bad, but he knew something had to change. And he was sleeping like 20 hours a day and just miserable, but he wanted to make a change. He wanted to live. Cause that night he, he literally thought like, I could, I could die at any minute. This I'm so unhealthy. And what I, I was like, I will do anything that you want to do that you think you can stick with. And he said, I want to try carnivore. He'd heard about it. We tried it for like a minute, a year before and didn't stick with it. And he's like, but I, I want to do it. I know I can lose the weight. And that's a big part because he was like 120 pounds overweight. He's like, I know I can lose the weight. And if I can lose the weight, other things will probably feel better. And within a month, everything started to feel better. His anxiety was better. His blood pressure was better. His weight was, but everything just, and as you know, the story goes, everything just got better after that faster and faster. 
That's so incredible. And I relate to his story a bit. I, I, I tried the carnivore diet for more than a minute, but just I did it for a little bit of time and I had some good success, but then I kind of stopped. And then later I sort of had this epiphany he had of, you know what? I actually want to do that. I think that that's the lifestyle I can stick with. And so I think for some people you have to have failed first to then be successful. So if anyone's watching this and you've tried it and failed, if you're still watching this YouTube video, you're obviously still interested. So don't feel like it's out of the question for you. That was my story. That was your husband's story. And I think it's a story worth sharing. Yeah. And I know for us, it had to be more than weight loss. Like weight loss seems like it should be a huge motivator, but it just wasn't enough to because the other stuff was just too enticing. But it, when it became my, my health, like, it, you know, hit for him, his, his health was, it was deadly serious. That was a bigger motivator than I just want to lose some weight. And that's what, and that's what keeps him going is I don't want to ever feel that way again. I don't want to ever feel that sick again and that miserable. And that keeps everybody on board of staying focused. Yeah, that'll do it. So it sounds like you were on board and supportive from the very, very beginning, which is awesome as a partner, yeah. but how did you win and how did you get the kids involved? Uh, we got involved right away because to be successful, it has to be the whole family in this. You can't be making steaks for dad and then be feeding the, the kids tacos and pizza and macaroni and cheese and ice cream. It can't be around, especially for that initial phase when it, it's so hard to, to get over those cravings and what you're used to. We had to clear all of that out of the pantry. So it, right away, it was all flour and sugar products were gone. All the grains were gone, all of that right away. And then the things like fruits and vegetables and uh, condiments, we slowly worked out with the kids. We let that be kind of our transition. And I did a whole video about it. Like we just transitioned. We let them start off dipping it in ketchup, dipping in barbecue sauce, covering things in cheese and ranch was fine. And then we slowly worked that out because those were not the, as triggering as just having bread and pasta and uh, all the other stuff around and the sugar. So it was, but everybody had to be on board right away. The kids, we just let them take a lot longer and slower to transition. Did you and your husband use the same tools to transition with the condiments and the fruit and stuff, or did you two just dive right in? We dove right in. We cut out everything that wasn't animal-based right away, except for I took about six months to get rid of coffee. That was that was a long process for me, but everything else that wasn't animal-based, we got rid of uh, almost immediately. Uh, I mean, and we're fairly, my husband and I, very strict carnivore, I guess you'd say. Um, like, so we don't use pepper. We don't use spices. We're like salt, meat, eggs, some dairy. The, the kids get a little more flexibility, but, but that was it. But so we, but we had to get rid of all of it because for me, like I have a sugar addiction that's like, outrageous. And so even just having a little bit of something sweet, like will make me want sugar for days. And I don't like that feeling of, of being fixated on sugar and having to overcome the self-control and to, to like, okay, you think you want cookies, but you really don't want cookies. And all of that was triggered because you ate one grape. I mean, so to me, it's just not even, it's not even worth it. Oh yeah. I completely relate to that too. So I, I feel like a lot of moms might say, there's no way I could get my preschool aged kid to do this. There's no way, but you've done it with eight kids. So <laughs> how did that go? I mean, how did the kids respond to that initially? I mean, initially it, it is, it's hard and it's hard moments. We kept a lot of the focus on that we're doing this for health. There's doing, we're doing this for dad's health. That was a big part of it in the beginning. And if it's healthy for dad, it's healthy for all of us and reminding them, this is not, it's not a punishment. This is not a diet. This is the way we're going to eat to be the healthiest we can be. We were trying to optimize our health and that, especially the older kids, lots of explaining, lots of talking about it. And the younger kids, you just keep their options you know, limited to like, we'd find out the things that they enjoyed. We started with a lot of processed meats because they're a little more palatable for kids because of the additives, you know, so the little smokies and cheddar brops and hot dogs and bologna and things that are really not great, but they are, they, they get them more attuned to eating meats. 
And like I said, lots mm -hmm. of condiments and we put cheese on everything through so much cheese and then just slowly changing it a little bit, a little bit less. And eventually you run out of ketchup at some point and you just don't buy anymore. And then you eventually run out of ranch and I just, I just don't buy it again. And it just, so that helps and really paying attention to the things that they like and letting them pick their food a little bit more than like when I might batch cook before everybody had to eat. I'm making beef stroganoff. Everybody's eating beef stroganoff. I'm not making two meals, but now it's because of, uh, you know, we'll teach them how to make hamburgers in the air fryer and they make scrambled eggs and they make chicken wings. And so it's easy to be like, what do you want from the things we have available? And they get to pick and choose. And that helps a lot. So I have some that will eat bacon every day and some that eat chicken wings, you know, four times a week and some that'll eat hamburgers over and over and some that trade off a little bit. So it gives them a little bit more freedom and involvement and, and that helps a lot for, for them, but really figuring out what did, what did they individually like? Because some of mine will eat scrambled eggs and some of them just won't and not mm -hmm. trying to make them be the same person. And it sounds like they're able to do some of the work, which is great for you yes. <laughs> to take off a yes. little bit of the load. It does. And it also, they feel more ownership in it because when they went to the effort to cook it for themselves, they don't complain about it being overcooked or undercooked or something, or not exactly the way they like it because they are the one that made it. And so they feel a little bit more invested in the process and they like to learn to do things. So they're, even the six-year-old is always like, can you come watch me make my eggs? Cause she's not allowed to make it without supervision. And, and cause they, they want to be independent. Kids naturally want to learn to do things. And I have a, a video of my uh, four-year-old making chicken wings in the air fryer. And he's like taking the pieces out and putting them on the pan and puts the pan in himself. And then he pushes the button to some random number. And then I fix the number and, and he's like, I made it. And so they, they feel really good about that. That gives them a lot of confidence and independence. I really love what you said about from the beginning, you said for your husband really to be successful with this diet, it had to be more than just about weight loss because that's not enough to keep you motivated when you're just dying for that pizza. But mm -hmm. it turns out that that is really helpful anyway, because if the reason was to lose weight and then all of a sudden the eight kids are hearing, we're doing this to lose weight. Oh my gosh, that would create, I think so many issues around body image and just, you yes. know, so I think focusing on the health is so important anyway. And yes. being at a healthy weight is a part of health, but it's not the only part. No, no, it's not. And I'll tell people that like, you think the kids are fine and you think because they, they look healthy, they're at a healthy weight, but when you change your diet and you see the changes, you realize they weren't as fine as I thought they were. They, the way that they feel their energy levels are different. Their moods are better. Everything's more even they're, they're not starving and hungry all the time, craving snacks. Uh, my teenager was having migraines. I'm like, it started at like 14 years old. I'm like, 14 year old boys shouldn't have migraines. That doesn't, that seems odd to me. And we went through a year of testing and they never gave us a reason. They just gave us a prescription and they shrug your shoulders at it. And his migraines went away. And so it's all those little things. You see the changes. They're just more subtle because they're kids. But the amount of, of little improvements, I had one that was a little underweight and she has filled out to a little bit healthier of a, a weight and one that was struggling to keep her weight at a, at a good level. And that is balancing out very naturally without making her feel self-conscious about her food and how much she eats. Cause I was to a moment of like, do I need to teach her to count calories? Cause that just felt so wrong to have to teach someone that young to, to to think that critically about every bite that goes into their mouth. And now she can just eat as much as she wants of the food that we eat. She eats till she's full and she's very naturally balancing out her weight. And so that's so gratifying to me because I do worry about what, how are they going to be as adults and think about food and our culture is, has so many mixed messages. It's really hard to, to get on board with that. And you think about that with kids, you're like, I just want to set them up for the best success possible and I finally feel like I know how to do that. One less thing to really have to worry about as a parent. <laughs> I actually wanted to touch on the things you've noticed in the kids and how the, the benefits they've had, or, or I guess any, any negative side effects too. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to hear what you and your husband have experienced from this way of eating. Sure. So 
had with the kids, I think I hit most of them. We definitely have fewer stomach aches. Uh, their allergies are a little bit better. So it, it's all the little things like that. Like I said, their, their moods and their energy levels have gone through the roof. Like they have lots of energy, but it's even. So we're not having like the energy and the crash and the energy and the crash and just the grumpiness and the, the hangry, I'm hung, wanting feelings all the time. And always seeking out snacks and candy wherever you went, like little hungry gremlins. It, it was, it's the funniest thing. Um, so with the kids out, it's like been the best part. It's just, it's all the subtle differences, the things you didn't know. You didn't know how bad you felt until you realized how good you could feel. That's kind of what we always keep going through in our mind is the kids didn't think they felt bad, but now they feel good. And now they know when they do uh, sometimes get something that they really shouldn't, they usually like get a stomach ache right away. Like a very early on, we would let them go to a birthday party and have cake and pizza or something like that. We're like, okay, it's a special occasion. And then they would come home with stomach aches. And I was like, okay, what are we doing here? Why are we saying that this is somehow a treat to go eat something that clearly makes us feel bad? And so we put a stop to that because it, it it's like, how are we thinking about food when then when treat is synonymous, or synonymous with unhealthy? I, I just, you know, wanted to just try to think about it differently. So that is, that has been a big uh, wake up for us about how we even think about food and what we put in our bodies and not using it as entertainment. Um, for my husband and I, the, it's big to know the start with the weight loss. So he's lost almost 90 pounds. Um, and I've oh. lost about 55 pounds. Yes. It's, it's amazing. And that's been, we're just coming up on a year. So that's, that's the huge one, huge one out of the gate. For him, he was pre-diabetic and that has gone away. So he went off of that medication. His hypertension, he's down at normal levels. Like his blood pressure is like in the 120s, over 80 now. Um, and he's not on medication for that. He as, uh, used to have like IBS. He would eat and run to the bathroom within five to 10 minutes. He's, even if he drinks a glass of water, he has to go to the bathroom. It was all constantly a thing. And so it got him into the habit where he would only eat like once or twice a day because he didn't want to have to go to the bathroom and it would, and then he'd eat these huge unhealthy meals because of, so it put him in this really bad habit. So that's gone away for him. Um, what those are, and then his anxiety was the other big one. He's been on anxiety medication for almost 20 years and mm -hmm. he has been off of that for almost a year now as well. And that's, he's just managing that um, it, it's on his own. So it's, it's really amazing. The only thing that's not totally gone away was his testosterone was really low. And so he takes testosterone shots, but each, every six months they retest it. And so far, every time it has improved and they've decreased his dosage. So we're hoping just over time, the hormones will balance out and he won't have to take medication for that eventually. So Huh. That's, that's incredible you guys are like the poster children for the carnivore diet I know he's it's it's a it's amazing but I tell people amazing how much healing comes just from what you eat like I never guessed all of it those things because all of those things too we were told they just are like this is we don't know why it happens and you know with the hypertension eat less salt and there's just like it's it's just very frustrating because they don't have real answers. They have sometimes a medication and sometimes like with his IBS, they're just like, uh, you know, that there was, I mean, we probably had 20 doctors tell him there's nothing they can do about it. And, and now, now it's totally gone. It's not even an issue. And for me, like I said, there's the weight loss. I see a lot of improvement in like my skin, uh, like inflammation. I look at, I was, I'm about the same weight as when I got married but I look healthier. We were looking at like our wedding pictures and I look healthier now than I did 17 years ago as a much younger person. And it does help with my congestion. I have sinuses. It's, it's more subtle things for me, uh, but it's, it definitely have that even energy and the, the brain fog is gone. And I, used to eat a lot of sweets and then I would have the sugar crash and then I would drink a lot of coffee and then I would eat more sweets and sure. And so I was going all day, all day up and down because I'm trying to run a million miles an hour during the day with all the kids and everything we're trying to get done. And I was drinking like two pots of coffee a day. 
there's just crazy amounts of caffeine. And I, I don't know what that was doing to my body, but it was definitely was not good. <laughs> I have to say for me, probably the best benefit is not feeling controlled by food. Not, mm-hmm. you know, ever since I was probably 14 years old and I started worrying about weight and I went on Weight Watchers and I've done Whole30 and I've done paleo diets and I've like all these different things, just trying to find like how to eat to not, to not, gain weight and all I'm doing is thinking about food all day long and Mm -hmm. and being obsessed with what I can eat or how much I should eat or not eat or not caring but then feeling even worse about that and now I just I don't think about it it's I I just eat when I'm hungry and then I don't think about it until later like it doesn't it's not always rolling around in the back of my mind about what other what other sugar products I can go scrounge up to eat. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. freedom for me it might be a, a limited menu, but it is total freedom. That's the thing. Uh, limiting your diet choices sometimes just opens up your life <laughs> so completely, which is incredible. People don't understand that, but believe me, I do. Now I have a very specific question about, um, sort of the medical care with your husband. Um, something I think about a lot when, promoting this diet to people that have, let's say high blood pressure and they're on blood pressure medications is gosh, I hope they don't dive right in their blood pressure just goes way down. They're still on the medications and then they're passing Mm -hmm. out or something. I can't not think about that because I'm a physical therapist. I can't turn it off. So I'm curious, what did your husband do? I mean, was he communicating with his doctor this whole time and was there a plan for when and how to come off these blood pressure medicines? How did that all work for him? Well, for us, it kind of worked out pretty easily because the medication wasn't helping. So the oh. the first one that he was put on didn't do anything. And then they tra- uh, prescribed another one. And I think that one made him really sick. It didn't, they weren't helping. They were like, they, his blood pressure was still like easily in the one eighties at rest. And sometimes like if on a good day, it might be in the one sixties. So it, it wasn't you know, he'd get up in the morning and this big handful of pills and like half of them aren't doing any, they weren't fixing any of the problems. So he just, just stopped taking it. And with, it probably took about six months for his blood pressure to get to really healthy levels, but it just, the average of it slowly came down. So, but he just gave up on the medication. Okay. So we're not necessarily promoting that for everyone to just right. stop taking your pills, right. but something right. to keep in mind that, you know, if you're on a bunch of pills and you do this diet mm-hmm. and you start making drastic improvements, something's going to have to change with those pills. And so yes. be in contact with a doctor, at least to help you yes. kind of guide. Through. You mentioned a lot of examples of what you guys eat. You said, uh, chicken wings and bacon mm-hmm. and, uh, you said a lot more, but I'm just curious. I know your diet has transitioned over the mm-hmm. year. What are you eating now most consistently? Like in a typical week, what might be on your grocery list? In a typical week, we have lots of ground beef. So we buy, we buy everything in bulk now because we eat simple, but we buy a lot of it. So we buy like 80 pounds of ground beef at a time. And that's about a week and a half's worth of ground beef for our family. (laughs) It's crazy, big, huge tubes. And we buy chicken wings. And we get just super plain, not seasoned or anything, just like the party wings. And we'll buy steaks, typically like a whole, my husband loves ribeye. And so he'll buy a whole ribeye, which is, you know, this is very expensive, but then we slice it up. He just like dry brines it and puts it in the fridge. And then he just cuts off a steak as he wants it. And that's a big part of mostly for like him. And then our teenage son has them some, some of the time. We buy lots of chuck roasts and then we cut them up into little bites for steak. We call them steak bites. And so we'll take the whole chuck roasts and just chop them up into like one inch cubes and then fry those up. And we eat those a lot. The kids, it's one of their favorite things. And then lots of bacon. We buy about 40 pounds of bacon a week. I know it sounds crazy. And, (laughs) and 30 dozen eggs is about for about a week for us. And that's 90% of what we eat. Like anything else is just the occasional special occasion item or we're in a big hurry item or something like that. But that's mostly what we eat. 
that seems like a lot, but I mean, there's a lot of people in this family, 10 people. So how does the, how does your grocery bill compare to before you were carnivore? It's, it's really interesting that it's actually pretty similar as it is, Mm -hmm. because what we're buying is more expensive. We help balance that out by, by buying in bulk. Like our ground beef is like 230 a pound, but it's because we, I buy 80 pounds and I know that's not feasible for everybody. Um, uh, but we're not buying all of the junk anymore. Like the things like I always bring up things like cereal, you know, we could easily go through 40 or 50 bucks worth of cereal in a week. And the kids are, are hungry an hour after they eat cereal and hundreds of dollars on fresh fruits and vegetables and all of the snacks. Like we would have Friday night movie night and we would have 50 to hundred bucks in chips and ice cream and, you know, sparkly drinks and whatever. So it's all of those things really add up. And when we're not always trying to entertain ourselves with food, it, all of that, cutting all of that extra out, cutting all the eating out, it just really bounced out is, is really what it comes down to. What we eat is more expensive, but that's all we eat. And so there's no fillers. I think even people with a smaller family or maybe just individuals like me, they're not thinking about when they spent $10 at Starbucks or yes. when they grabbed a $12 organic, whatever snack thing at yes. Whole Foods. I mean, I, I think my, my experience is similar. I'm spending probably about the same on a carnivore diet as I was before and saving money on things like healthcare costs. Yes. And I, I did the math one month and I'm, I'm going to do it again here soon. But uh, in one particular month, we were averaging about $7 a person a day which I know we're a big family. So it sounds like a big number, but if you think on a per person scale, I mean, I know I was eating way more than $7 a person, you know, $7 a day in food before just based, like you said, I mean, it only takes one run through a Starbucks to, to uh, mess up those numbers. And now that I don't, I don't do all of that. It's I was like, okay, if I think about it, $7 and it, of course it's balancing out because a two-year-old's not eating $7 worth, but my husband and I are probably eating more like, you know, 10 or 12. It's like, okay, that's a, that's one nice steak. And then, you know, a half a pound of ground beef. And that's, that's a whole meal for a day. You know, sure. I have a, an, an eight-year-old that'll eat a whole package of bacon by herself. And I look at him like, oh my goodness, she's eating a whole package of bacon. But I was like, bacon's like $5 a pound. I mean, I would, you know, before I would have run through the drive through and bought her a $5 hamburger and fries. So I, I'm, it's, it's just changing the way you think about things. And she will, like, she's happy to have a pound of bacon for a meal. So I'm like, all right, that's fine. Just make sure there's bacon for other people too. Don't eat it all at once. Now, speaking of the two-year-old, since you've been at this for a year, has she ever even had any foods that aren't carnivore? She has. There was about maybe a six month period in there where she did. Cause I, you know, breastfed all my children. And then I did something called baby led weaning where they would eat, they would just transition to, to real foods and she would eat what the family was eating and so there was a time in there where she was getting, I, I was always try to limit the, the sugar and the other stuff, but it uh, was very brief, but now she doesn't even, I don't even think she recognizes some of it. Like we were at a, a school uh, party the other night and somebody had a plate sitting there that was leftover and it had like meat and cheese and a chocolate chip cookie on it. And she went up and just grabbed a handful of cheese and ran off. Like she didn't even recognize that the cookie was a thing she could eat. Like she wanted the little, little blocks of cheese. And so I was like, okay, well, I actually, she clearly doesn't remember what the chocolate is, So it's just hopefully a good thing. <laughs> hopefully yeah, she will be that's incredible. obsessed with it. Like we are. If we were all so lucky to have started I know. as, you know, babies, man, but I mean, better late than never for sure. Right. Right. That's all I can do is hope that it just sets them up for you know, the, the best, best possible outcome. That's all I can say at this point. Do you feel like you have less pressure and stress on you? Does this feel like it's an easing thing for your spirit that you're, you're feeding your kids this way? It does. It does. I finally have confidence that they're, they're getting the nutrition that they need, that they're, they're, uh, going to be able to know how to feed themselves as adults, I see a lot of young people that don't, they don't know how to cook. And so you get really dependent on fast food and processed food. And 
you know, they all know how to make food. My teenage son will, you know, come home from soccer practice and, and take a bag of wings out to the, the grill and just make a huge batch of wings or something, or he goes out and cooks some steak or, and all the way down to the younger ones being able to make their own foods. So I, I'm like, okay, they're going to know how to be independent and functioning adults. And people always ask, are they, do you think they're going to do this as adults? Are they going to go off the rails when you're not in control of them? And I'm like, Maybe. I mean, I'm sure some of them will. I mean, the odds are some of them are going to want more freedom and they're going to try other things, but they're going to know right away if it doesn't make them feel good. And they'll always know how to get back to feeling good. And then it'll be on them to decide if how they want to live their lives. And all I've done is just show them the best that I know how at this point. I love that. It's so good. They're at least getting this barometer that they can measure against for the rest of their lives. Most kids don't have that luxury. Let's do something a little fun. I want to hear um, each kid, their age and their favorite carnivore food. Okay. All right. We'll start at the bottom. So my two-year-old, her name is Kenna and she always says meat, meat. She loves meat. She probably would say just hamburger patties. She's cute. If you watch my videos and you hear the, the, the meat, she says meat and it's the cutest thing all the time, but she loves hamburger. So she eats a lot of just hamburger patties and running around the house with them like they're like meat cookies, like Kelly Hogan's. <laughs> she loves those. And, um, and let's see my four-year-old diesel is, what would he say? He would probably, he would probably also say hamburger. He, they, they love hamburgers, especially we get really fatty, like 70, 30 hamburger patties and they're super juicy. Um, and then six-year-old is Tristeza and she loves, she loves bacon. She loves chicken wings and steak bites. That's probably a, an ongoing favorite. Madrigal is eight and she's my bacon lover. She will just eat pounds of bacon if I let her or bacon and eggs. And that's like scrambled eggs that she makes herself. She'll make that every day. If we have bacon in the house, that's what she's up making with lots of butter. And let's see, we'll go there. My twins are 11 and their names are Lyric and Theory. And Lyric loves chicken wings and Theory loves hamburger, like fatty, juicy hamburgers as well. And then we have Aria. <laughs> Aria's 13 and she likes steak. That's probably like a good, like ribeye steak is probably one mm -hmm. of her favorite things. And then Crash is 15, almost 16. And for him, it's also, it's ground beef. Like he'll eat it in a bowl with a spoon and mm -hmm. then he'll eat steak is probably his other thing, just depending on, he goes back and forth between the two. What about you and your husband? Uh, for me, probably my favorite thing is I like lamb, like a good lamb chop. And I like fried eggs. And especially if I can get fried eggs with hamburger, that's really great. And then my husband, it's it's uh, ribeye every time. That's like yeah. his favorite thing. He'd eat ribeye every day if he can most of the time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Although everything you listed is so delicious. Right. And there's, it's so there's no bad foods about... in there. Oh, and you know, I guess, and, and the thing is, is it changes over time too. Like my kids are going to watch that and this video and they'll be like, that's not my favorite anymore. That was my favorite, like a month ago or something. Like, uh, one of the twins has started frying up fish. Like she'll fry up like three fillets of tilapia and chop it up into little bits and then put enough butter on it that it's like a soup almost. And then she eats it like that. And it's really, really good. And I don't know where she came up with that idea, but I'm like, can you please make me one of those? Cause that is really good. <laughs> So, you know, uh -huh. they're getting creative. That's so cool. I mean, they're going to be little chefs by the time they get out of the house because they will have learned so many ways to prepare all these foods. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's great. And that, like I could say like the air fryer, you can see I've got it right back over there. It's like our best friend because it's, it's safe for kids to use. So it's really safe for them to learn how to use it. And you can, you can, they can do eggs in an air fryer or like you can like do boiled eggs or hard boiled eggs in an air fryer. They can, but they can cook their meats in it. And all they have to do is learn the settings. And so you don't, but you don't have to worry about them burning themselves or catching something on fire or the mess. And so it makes it very easy for them to be independent because they pretty much have free reign. They can eat as much of the, of the meat as they want. And as often as they want, because they, they just don't overeat it. No, like you just, you just can't overeat it this way for us anyway. That's because they, you know, I just assume that their bodies are growing and they're, they're hungry. They're hungry and they'll stop eating when they're not. So 
And there's something about these very nutrient dense animal foods that you feel full when you're full, you know, you're getting enough protein and fat. You're not just constantly seeking like you would be with donuts and pizza. At least that's been my experience. And I think just about every carnivore, I don't want to speak for everyone, but yes, sounds like that's your guys' case too. Yes, absolutely. Outside the house, do you or your husband or any of the kids ever eat any non-carnivore foods now? We do not. We are very strict about it at this point. And, and the, the only exception, it's like the most minor thing is my kids have gum. It's, it's funny to think, I'm like, all right, you can have, you can have gum sometimes. Um, but no, my husband and I very, very strict, even to like that. We don't like to use seasonings. The kids, if we go somewhere and they've made chicken wings and it has garlic powder on it, that's fine. Well, we're fine with that sort of thing, but no fruits, no vegetables, no grains, no sugars, any of that at, at all at this point. And so mm-hmm. if we go to a potluck or we go to a school event, I just make sure and take a lot of volunteer to bring food. And I take a lot of it and make sure it's things we can eat. And mm-hmm. more and more people are uh, choosing to be accommodating without being when asked, or they will want to bring, like there's a lady at our church that like brings um, gum for all the kids. And one of my kids has braces, so she can't have the gum. And so she brings her cheese sticks and, you oh, know, so oh. she just, I guess she's like, what can I bring her? So she wants, she so badly wants to bring her something nice. Cause she, she likes being the lady that everyone's excited. All the kids run up to her for their, their gum and say hi. And, and so people are, I found are very nice and accommodating in that way. If you're just very nice and respectful and you don't make it more work for them. So when we, you know, go to things. I just plan ahead and I just, and we just forewarn them that, you know, we just remind the kids like we're going to go Easter egg hunting and I'm going to take a ton of eggs that don't have candy in them. They're going to have little toys and stickers and other things in it, but you're probably going to find eggs with candy in it. And we're just going to take the candy out. We put it in a big pile and they gave it to their friends. And, and that was, and that's just, we either do that or we're not going to go. And they, so they're mostly used to it by now. It's, I would say it's always easy. I mean, there's definitely times when they're still a little sad about it, but it's so Mm. short-lived it's, you know, it's not like they weren't sad before with other things. So it's, it's just part of, it's just part of growing up is just learning. Sometimes things aren't always going to be exactly the way you want, but, but it's a, it's a very minor part of our lives anymore. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the way carnivore is too. Just the food in general is now a minor part of your life, which is really quite a blessing. Well, you've given a few tips already on bringing a bunch of food to a potluck and things like that. But when it comes to travel, sporting events for the kids, uh, packing lunches when they're having school outside the house, because I know you homeschool, mm-hmm. any of that kind of stuff, what tips do you have? My big tips are to plan ahead and, and really think about it. So we like for the school, like they go to co-op two times a week um, during the school year. And so they have to take a lunch. And the night before they just cook the things that they want to have in their meal, or we will batch cook. I'll make a a whole bunch of hamburgers or steak bites. And then whoever wants those will just pack them into their, their bins to go. And then we drink a lot of sparkling water. So they take a can of sparkling water with them Uh, for traveling for sports. uh, My son likes to take like meat and cheese roll-ups, which is like just deli meat and cheese slices. And we try not to eat a lot of deli meats, but this is one thing that's really easy because he doesn't have to warm it up and it it mm-hmm. travels well for his games. So that's the kind of thing. Um, when we took a big family vacation, we made tons of jerky and pork chips. We have a big dehydrator and we'll just make pounds and pounds and pounds of it to take with us. So that way we know. So it's just salt and meat and um, probably way more affordable than buying food on the road. So it's just Finding all the little things, finding little things. I keep sardines in my purse. Like, so I I'm, I'm always have something to eat if I'm, I'm out and I'm hungry and I don't want to stop and get a burger patty at McDonald's or something. It's just, it's always, so that's always making sure that you have an option. I think that's the thing and not getting yourself so hungry or so um, far away from being able to get to good food that you get desperate is really, that's the biggest thing. Now, what about eating out? Do you guys 
guys do much in the way of eating out, whether it's fast food or actual restaurants? Not very often anymore. Uh, we will, I'd say maybe once a month, we will get fast food hamburgers because of, for convenience. And it's just, it's really expensive to think like, you know, we'll spend a hundred bucks to get, you know, 50 hamburger patties at McDonald's. And, and I'm like, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just hamburger patties from McDonald's like that. So we could, we could have bought a ribeye, you know, <laughs> it was what we're thinking. Like, you know, it's for that price or half a ribeye anyway. And, and, um, so it, it's not something we really enjoy doing, but it's not like before we used to eat out a lot for entertainment and it's just not fun anymore. Cause we just don't enjoy the food as much, but we do try to help the kids learn like the older ones sometimes go out to eat with friends or with friends, families. So we teach them how to order things that they can eat. Like if they go to a Mexican restaurant, they just order a bowl of carne asada with cheese on top or something like that. And if they go uh -huh. to fast food, they just get burger patties. If they go to Buffalo Wild Wings, they just get plain wings with salt. You know, so we're helping them learn how to navigate that. But as a family, it's just rare. It's not fun and like it used to be. I just look at the food and like food at home is better. So I'm just not excited <laughs> yeah, about it. Totally get that. Now I have to know what sparkling water do you guys drink? Uh, we drink most of the time, whatever's cheapest, if we're going to buy cans of it. And then we have a soda stream and we make our own and I converted it to mm -hmm. having like a, a, a big, huge CO2 tank so that it lasts longer. But then we just oh. buy cans of polar ice or the generic brand at the store or whatever, because even, mm -hmm. even making our own, it's really nice to be able to take it with us. They take one with their lunch or we take it to our softball games and they, you know, just whatever, just the little things that keep it fun. Like they're excited about those things and it makes it enjoyable. Um, makes it those, that feels like a treat to them. So we, yeah, I completely agree. feels like a little treat. I love it too. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the biggest question people probably have is how to budget on this kind of a diet. If you're, like you said, it's not necessarily any more expensive, but when you're doing one big grocery trip for a week, it can feel very expensive and very daunting. So exactly. what tips have you picked up along the way as far as budgeting? The biggest thing is, I mean, obviously you start looking at what are the, the cheaper options if you're wanting to, I mean, ground beef is going to be one of your, your cheapest way to get beef, uh, eggs, lots and lots of eggs. And, you know, if you're needing to make it, you, know, you can blend things together with the eggs, like we would eat with sausage with eggs and bacon with eggs and different things to make the eggs feel different with steak with eggs. Um, I've seen you get like a whole rotisserie chicken or you can get a whole chicken and roast it and then break it up into pieces. That's very cheap. Lots of drumsticks. Drumsticks are way cheaper than chicken wings. And we went through a phase where we were eating tons and tons of chicken drumsticks. And probably the biggest thing in the long run is buying in bulk too. Because once you're really confident that these are the things I'm going to eat and they're not going to go bad, I'm just going to get a bunch of it. And we have like a, a food saver, a preserver, vacuum, vacuum sealer. And so if I get a good deal on something that we're not going to go through, I just break it up into smaller bags and freeze it. And so even if you're a much smaller family than us, you can buy the huge packs of things and just break it down into smaller amounts and, and save it. And if you know, I know at some point freezer and fridge space runs out for people, but the bulk makes such a difference in our costs because like I said, with our ground beef, we buy 80 pounds and it's like two, $2 and 30 cents a pound that way, mm -hmm. which you can't beat that. And that's just mm -hmm. from the grocery store. No, it's, uh, this is from a place called restaurant depot. And so that's a, uh, it's like a big box. It's like a big, um, it's kind of like a Costco, but it's for restaurants. And so since we own our own business, we're able to shop there. Um, but it would kind of be pretty similar. You can look into like Costco's and Sam's and things like that for, for good deals that way. And also looking at buying like from a, a farmer too. Like we bought a whole cow uh, a few months ago and, and put that in the freezer, you know, for a smaller family, you can find places that'll sell you a quarter or a half cow. And that the, your cost per pound will be it's usually in the range of like $5 a pound. And with that, you're getting, you know, filet mignon and ribeye as well as hamburger. So you're getting kind of balances out the cost there. You know, there is a small part of the sticker shot, I'm sure for people, 
but you have to stop buying all the other stuff. You have to make that complete transition because initially it was more expensive. And then when we stopped all the other stuff completely, I was like, oh, I didn't realize how much we were spending on, on just like cheese and ketchup. It was just, it was just a little, you don't think of those being as expensive things, but they were, they were definitely adding up. Great tips. So if someone's watching this and they are interested in the idea of switching themselves and their family to a carnivore diet, and they just feel overwhelmed, they just don't even know where to start. What advice would you give them? Make a hobby of watching videos, finding channels that you really relate to. There's so many great ones out there now and finding a mixture of them too. Like I like having a channels that I find very inspirational and then having channels that are very informational. You know, so there's the ones where with the doctors and they're going to talk about your cholesterol and your, and is this healthy and those sort of things. And then you just find the one with somebody that you can relate to their personality or their journey or something. And they're just excited to tell you every day about how much better they feel. And so we kind of would go back and forth between those. That was like, um, you know, so for us, it's, it's because sometimes you just need a cheerleader and sometimes you need some information. And so there's different purposes to that. And so you kind of make that, so it's always on your mind and it gives you a lot of confidence. And then you got to start by just killing all of the really, the sugar in the grain has to go all at once because even the littlest bit of it is going to keep you wanting to go for more. So you can just cut all of those out as fast as possible and just endure that first, you know, week or two of cravings and withdrawals then it'll get better and better over time. And just trying to remember your why, why are you doing this? What do you want to this? Where do you want to be a year from now, you know, or five years from now, what is the long-term goals? And I, I think that's what helps me the most. It's just remembering why we're doing this. What are we really missing out on? You know, it's not really that much. We're not missing out on anything of value. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was fantastic. Now, if people want to hear more about your story and see kind of every day, what you do with your family on the practical level, where can they find you? Sure. They can find me at my YouTube channel is carnivore family that I've just started getting going on. And then I'm also pretty active on Instagram and uh, like the other places like Facebook and TikTok and rumble, but really most biggest part is Instagram and the YouTube channel. And then um, you can find me and through those, they can, they can email me. I'm still starting, you know, pretty new at all of this. So if people want to email me questions and talk about their families, I, I love going back and forth with the people, you know, they cut you comment on my videos and my husband and I will answer your questions because we just really want to show people that it can be done. You know, if people don't want to do this, that's, that's fine. I'm not telling anybody what they need to do with their children, but there's a lot of people that want to do this with their children because they see that that kids are not thriving and that this could be better, that there can be a better way. And they, they are excited to try it. So we we really want to help people do that if they they're looking for it. The carnivore family on YouTube and on Instagram. Yes. Okay. And you said TikTok and Facebook and rumble as well, but it's yes. carnivore family, no space, no dot, nothing like that. Right. I don't, uh, definitely not on on YouTube. I think it might be carnivore.family on Instagram. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure on that. I should probably, I should probably have that in front of me to remember. <laughs> I will do my research and I will make sure to put the right uh, caption in this video for this Thanks. part. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for taking oh, almost an hour out Absolutely. of your day. I know you're a very busy woman and I appreciate it. I know this is going to help so many people. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If so, please like and subscribe and definitely follow Rebecca and I on Instagram where we can connect a lot more pretty much every day.